Is there a second? Second. To refer back? Discussion on referring the item back. Um, uh, Discussion. Discussion. Do you speak to your motion, Mr. Christie? I make a motion to refer it back to the plan. You already, you already made the motion, sir. And it was said repeat. No, no, I said that you to speak to your, to your own motion. Yeah, I think it, it says uh, what, it, what it says. Just you know, redraw the boundaries, please, a, a lot more people come back and still, I think it can get to a 67% and then we'll pass it. Councilmember Brett. Thank you, Mayor. You're probably right. It's a very serious issue. As we sit here today, there are uh, 40 of the 65 uh, owners. The 61 percent that we know that today, it may be legal, but by God, it's not right that we move forward here today knowing that, that we don't have the required our 67 percent majority. A referral back will allow for the ordinance to be amended. I fully intend to support it when we get 67% because that's a far clear majority, super majority uh, of the people saying they want to do it. We modify ordinances every week here at this council table. So it's not like it's going to take a long time to amend the ordinance to designate a particular time as it relates to retractions. At some point, as has been said by Councilman Pennington, we have to have finality, no doubt about that. You can't just keep having people come forward and change their mind. But because the ordinance doesn't even address retraction and the ability to retract, that's a serious component that needs to be addressed in the ordinance, and a motion to delay will allow us to put that proviso in the ordinance and allow these four residents to uh, opt out and we respect property rights and in good conscience vote uh, to move forward with the designation on behalf of 67%. Thank you. Mayor Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I'm not a favor of the motion and, and I'll state why and, and if you or Attorney Feldman can chime in. Uh, my understanding is that in, in, in effect we either voted up or down. If it's voted, if, 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 if we were to go back to the planning director, then the planning director would just either, I believe, affirm the current boundaries or if not, it would pretty much have to begin a process all over again. And because there's no process for retraction, we could be in the same boat again because uh, once they would change the boundaries again and get the so-called 67%, by the time it comes to council, if anybody dropped out, again, then we wouldn't be at 67% because it doesn't address the retraction. So we could be back at the point and say, well, it's not at 67% again because one person dropped out and we would still be technically under the 67% because there's no specific language in there to deal with retraction. So even if we were to gain the 67% at any given time, there's nothing to guarantee that they won't drop out and then we're still voting on the same thing that we're under that threshold. So, uh, and I, my understanding again is that the, the community would have to go again and reinitiate this process. And even if they didn't, they would just have to expand the boundaries outwards uh, to gain that 67% and then some of those could drop out. So, uh, in my opinion, I think we either voted up or down today as it is and, and move forward with uh, with. Mayor Pinto Gonzalez, if I may borrow a moment of your time, a no vote of the main ordinance would have the same effect as what Councilmember Christie has proposed. That at, under the ordinance, a no vote sends it back to the drawing board, which is what he's asked. He's uh, essentially this would preempt today's uh, process. So going back to the drawing board means <coughs> for them to restart the process again. At the uh, as a planning director's level, if there's not a revote or a no vote, there's nothing in the ordinance that allows a, a, a revote or a retraction. <coughs> it, it just. Right. Councilman Lester. Thank you, Mayor. I have no intention of saying anything about this matter because it's directly not in District Judge's office. Following along with the conversations, it concerns me. Uh, I'll be voting against this motion, not because it's not well thought out, but it seems to me that if we vote on this motion now to refer it back to planning, we are saying to the citizens of that neighborhood who have read the ordinance, who have followed the ordinance, who have done everything that we're, they were supposed to do 
in the outline of what they were supposed to do in order to get this project done. Then came that. Sorry, we're going to change the rules at the last minute. I, I firmly believe that we may need to reevaluate this and other ordinances for the, the way they affect how civic associations and neighborhood groups move forward. But I don't think you do that after they've done all the hard work. You might do that prospectively. Uh, so in that instance, I'm going to be voting no against this particular motion to refer it back to planning because I think the folks of that neighborhood have done everything they were told to do, and it's unfair for us to pull the rug out from under them now. Thank you. Councilor uh, uh, Thank you, thank you, Mayor. I think I agree in substance with uh, Councilmember Lester, and uh, I, I think on the penalty issue, which. You know, I think Councilmember Bradford and I agree on. I think uh, there's hardly any election of any kind where people have the right to retract once they voted, uh, whether it's a private uh, secret ballot or, or, or a public ballot. I think the question really is, have, have the residents been given an adequate time after the public hearing or whatever the procedure is? If it's, you know, if it's five days or 10 days, I think you can argue that that's not enough. But if it's 30 days, then, uh, you know, people will, will be given, you know, an adequate time to, to consider it. So uh, I, I do think that from a finality standpoint and from a fairness standpoint, what Mr. Lester has had to say that, uh, you know, we ought to, ought to proceed here. I mean, the, the people who have signed, you know, believe that their property rights are best protected by proceeding with this district, and some of the people have now, I mean, they have a different idea of how to best protect their property rights. I don't think we're taking any property rights away from anybody. The question is how to best proceed to protect those, and there, there's, as, as most things that we consider here, there are differences of opinion on how to do it. Thank you. Councilor Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think we have a understand that if, if people continue to drop their support for this matter, we're suggesting that, then we're suggesting also perhaps that they don't have all the information that they need. Perhaps they don't have the time to look at the busy line, they have, have taxes to pay and the like. I think uh, if, if we do have a situation like that again and again and again, if that's ever the situation, yes, there's, there's, there's that trouble, but I don't think that will ever be the case, but if, if that were the case, trouble, that's trouble that we need to take upon ourselves because we're talking about the fundamental rights of citizens here. And if they feel strongly about checking their homes and not being part of the historic district, having the right to, for example, install energy efficient windows, so which they will not have the opportunity to do once this historic district is established. They need to understand full well that if they do decide to drop out after they say that they thought they had the information they needed to support it, and they change their mind, sure, it would be nice to have finality, but when, we, when it comes to fundamental property rights as the foundation of this nation, there cannot be enough trouble that we should, uh, I mean, we can put up whatever we put up to protect the rights of the citizens of Houston. And I don't think this will be going back and forth, back and forth because the information is out there now and, 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 and citizens who have agreed are getting the information and if they felt that they were coerced the first time in regards to uh, uh, expansion of I-45 and the like, they will know now how they feel and they can move forward on this action. We can give the opportunity to the uh, folks on the streets to, to get out of this as, as they so choose. So this, is, this is nothing but a good thing and, and shows our goodwill for all parties, because those who are working hard on this, they will get what they want in good time and done well, right, and proper, and with good justice. Here's well measured. Thank you. Councilmember Burks. Thank you, Mayor. I um, let me just echo this. Uh, Councilmember Brown said the citizens do have rights. And sometimes the citizen is not given the correct information uh, to make a good judgment. You know, politics is strange. Uh, we just came out of the political season. Here we elected the president. And one said this is not going to work. The other said that's not going to work. And what I'm saying now is, is that everyone.
everyone has their slant on how they want to send this out. In this case here, this affects homeowners. If they want to make improvements on their home, their child may take or may inherit the house. If they want to make changes, they can't do it. Uh, they're stuck with it. That means that people will probably say, I want to move out of my community. That means big government has stepped in and done what? Put his hand down on it and said, we do not have an ordinance where we could have made the changes. I, I refer you back to 2010. A subdivision called Lindbrook Valley went through the same thing. We should have done something then. But then at the same time, let's go back a little bit further to Freedman Town. Historic slave homeowners area. It's no longer called Freedman Town anymore. Mayor is called Midtown. The total identity of the area has been lost. Historic. In its own way. Now we talk about a name here. We talk about actions and activities of this city here, which no one can argue against it. Uh, I am here just to say this, that property rights and, uh, are for the property owners, and the owners should make that decision, and we should echo that decision. But when we lose things like Midtown, places like Midtown, to or Freeman Town, excuse me, to Midtown, we lose its identity. <coughs> we had a ward system in this city, we don't longer have a ward system in our city now. And that's our history. So when we begin to talk about historic districts, I really would like it to be historical and really be the true meaning of history. Mayor, I'm, I'm speaking about this, and I know you've had conversations, but I asked this council to remember one thing. Eli Whitney did not invent the cotton gin. It was a slave. And the slave invented it, but he couldn't get the credit for it because at that time the laws were that. Because the law was law and it was wrong, it had to be changed. So I'm just asking us to go back and revisit this ordinance. This ordinance needs to be revisited and make changes that are necessary for it because what we're doing is we're going back a second time doing the same thing again as we did to Glenbrook Valley as we do now. And we keep this up. I think this is a bad signal to the property owners and the citizens of this city. Thank you. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I kind of wish this uh, fight would be on district day we haven't had an opportunity to have a historic uh, anyway. Uh, I agree with Bradford and Councilman Bradford and Lester. I understand both points, both sides and compelling arguments. I don't have to be a judge if you were going against each other. Uh, but we're in a situation where the, the law is the law currently and we have to abide by what we have in place today. Uh, we're, talk, we're sitting here talking about property rights, property rights, property rights. But we have to, I understand the 67%, but we, we have over 50% of the people. And I understand what it, what it, how, as it, how it reads. And we have to take that into account that we have a system in place as it is now. We need to go forward with that. So therefore, I will be supporting uh, this, this effort. <coughs> Councilmember Green. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and let me thank uh, Dr. Christie as well as uh, Councilmember Bradford with regard to uh, uh, the, the place where they're coming from with regard to uh, the, um, the input of the residents. Uh, I guess I speak for me from, uh, from where I come from. I speak from the community standpoint and how neighborhoods are best able to affect change in their area. And as a district council member, working with neighborhoods daily to try to figure out what's the best solution. Uh, how can we make sure we preserve our neighborhood? How can we make sure we preserve our property values? How can we make sure our crime is low? What is, it, what is that solution? What is that process? And so, when you come with uh, recommendations of historic districts, uh, you know, management district, things of that nature, that the community has come together to say, this is the answer for our community, then I think we have to listen. Uh, and I do, when you undertake these projects, there will be some that we may not agree, and I get it. But at the end of the day, for the whole, uh, in order to move the community forward, you know, there's 
been lots of dialogue. I want to thank Councilmember Gonzalez. He, I know he's he's vetted this issue. You know, this is something that is just not haphazard. But it's about how we move entire communities and the best solution to move entire communities forward. And so, uh, um, with this particular uh, action, because I know the work that's gone into it by the community, I'm going to have to support uh, Councilmember um, on this endeavor. Councilmember Thank you, Mayor. We, we make decisions at Council every week. So any given week, we could add a proviso to the ordinance, which addresses the lack of the retraction proviso. So if it's not going to take a year, two months, or three months to do that. So we could fix the deficit in the ordinance any given week, therefore bringing finality uh, to the issue. But I. Someone has to speak up for, you know, these four residents who said, you know what, uh, I want something different to happen, you know, the least lost in life. Someone has to speak up for those. But I don't want it to be understood that the ordinance doesn't allow, that, that the ordinance requires us to do something other than what the discussion is today. Article 7. Section uh, 33, 225C specifically states that the City Council shall consider an application for designation after receiving a recommendation from the HAHC and shall decide whether to designate the property. It doesn't say that we have to vote up or down at the first time it's presented to Council. There's no prohibition that, that it be sent back. It's just that we can't carve out different addresses, etc. We have to decide whether we're going to designate the property. It doesn't say when we have to decide. It doesn't say what process we must utilize to make a determination. So it's perfectly within the statute for us to say send it back because that is uh, part of our process to determine if we're going to designate it or not. And I fully appreciate the work that the the plan director has done, the plan director has followed all the provisos required. Appreciate the work all the hard citizens have done out there. But at the same time, something so serious as property rights, and I'm not depriving anything of those people who want the designation. For them to wait another week or another two weeks and let the people who don't want it get out of the deal, what's the harm in that? Those who want to still get their designation, they just wait two weeks until we modify the ordinance. I think property rights are much more serious than uh, moving forward in the face of knowledge that you don't have uh, what you need, the 67%, and there's an easy way to cure the problem and allow those who want to retract to retract. Uh, having said that, uh, I stand down and thank you for the commentary and time.